The Museum of Fine Arts Houston is hosting an exhibition of clothing that is practical, beautiful, and steeped in cultural significance. These are splendid, gloriously colorful ecots from the 19th century, uh, created in the oasis towns of Bukhara, Samarkand, and the Fergana Valley. Ecot is actually a Malay term. It's really the globally recognized term for these textiles. It refers both to the textiles and the extremely complicated technique used to make them. They were made historically and even today from Central Asia to Southeast Asia, India to the Yemen, Central and South America, um, and even in the United States. In Central Asia, uh, the term that is used is a bit more poetic. It's called aberbandi which means cloud binding. And you can really think about you know, these kaleidoscopic colors that you see in the robes um, behind me, for example. It's like trying to bind a cloud, which is you know, impossible. The robes that you see here uh, were worn by men, women, and children for centuries on the Central Asian steppe. Really, they evolved from a nomadic lifestyle, easy to wear, easy to ride on horseback. Um, they are loosely cut robes that are about ankle length or knee length, called chapan, that's one. Another is a dress form that goes underneath. And the third is a simple pair of dra uh, drawstring trousers. There is one special robe um, that was worn by women only. It's called a munisak, and this has a lot of social and cultural significance because the munisak was made of very precious ikat fabric. Um, this was part of the bride price, if you will. So the groom's family, depending on uh, their financial abilities, would um, bring bolts of ikat cloth to the bride's family who would then sew this into a very special robe called a muni sack. It's cut a little bit tighter and tapered under the arms. Um, and this is a robe that would accompany a married woman throughout her entire life. She would wear it on the first day in her husband's home. She would wear it for special occasions, uh, both auspicious and also funerals during her lifetime. And as she passed on, her muni sack would be placed on top of her coffin and then um, handed down in her family for generations. If you look for a special white resist line that goes all the way across a panel of an ikat. That's when you know it's a true ikat. These are so complicated, as I mentioned, each dye was done separately. So that meant each time you had to bind, dye, and then unbind and bind a new section of the pattern. So if you see a white line that goes all the way across, this is really the point, uh, the catch point that helped keep the designs together. And we can see this in a special video that we include in the exhibition. Um, I think one of the, the, the parts of the exhibition I'm especially pleased about is that we've got a slow motion video and an interactive iPad that help you learn more about the process and the dyes used cre uh, to create these ECOT textiles. This is very much a child-friendly exhibition. Um, so I would encourage kids especially to go around, pick their favorite robes, and also to see if they can see um, patterns from the natural world, world, motifs like trees, ram's horns, um, what they can see. They, these are really motifs that the weavers have uh, created in a more abstract form, but they do derive from natural motifs. I would also encourage kids to see in their everyday world ecot patterns. Everyone from the pottery barn to Madeline Weinrib, um, who's in our shop, they've got uh, modern takes on ecots. Colors of the Oasis is on display through June 4th. For more information, visit the museum's website at www.mfah.org. For Artbeat, I'm Stacy Hawkins.